Hello everyone. Today I'm talking about API 653 and how the internal inspection interval is based on tank bottom collected during the internal inspections. This is a critically important topic because there are some systematic problems with the methods in the standard. I want to acknowledge Andrew Yearwood and Andy Wong for their peer review and checks on the analyses and conclusions provided today. We have presented this material before. However, the reactions have ranged from dull silence to some interest. Part of the reason is that the work was not complete. We only demonstrated the problem for the corrosion occurring on one side, but to properly assess what is going on, the thinning of the bottom plate must look at the thinning from both the top side and bottom side. Before anything, I want to say that I have been participating in development of API 653 since the beginning, and I can say that more than any single regulation, policy, standard, or best practice, API 653 has effectively reduced tank bottom leaks. However, there is a gap in the standard that must be plugged because it leads to systematic overestimates of time to failure. Why is there such difficulty understanding and communicating this issue as I have experienced for several years now? The reason is that API 653's method is a black box that is not transparent and does not make any intuitive sense. Other reasons are that to test the effectiveness of a given action, data on performance is needed because the petroleum industry does not share or study corrosion rate data for tank bottoms, there is no feedback. All of it is anecdotal. The performance of API 653 for tank bottom failures is therefore not known and not quantified. This is a snapshot of the offending language governing the API 653 intervals. There are three problem areas. The first problem is unclear and confusing language. For example, in item 2, does the maximum rate of corrosion not repaired mean corrosion depth is after repairs or before repairs? The second problem is the summing of the corrosion rates from the top side and bottom side. The third and most significant problem is that the top side and bottom side calculations of corrosion rates are not corrosion rates at all, but an artifact of an algorithm. Throughout this presentation, we will base the topside corrosion rates on the unrepaired thickness, which is the proper way to do it, and the bottom side corrosion rates on the API 653 algorithm, as one could interpret the language this way. We will address the fact that most API 653 inspectors use the API algorithm on both sides of the tank bottom and demonstrate the implications later. To understand penetration of tank bottoms by corrosion, you must understand that there is a universally accepted practice, which I will refer to as the Linear Corrosion Rate, or LCR, model. But because API 653 is a black box, I will refer to the API 653 method as CRA for Corrosion Rate Algorithm, because it is an algorithm and not a model. It turns out that the CRA is both conservative and liberal, depending on where you are in the universe of topside and bottomside corrosion rates. This diagram shows topside and bottomside corrosion thinning of the bottom plate, so each side must be considered separately. This formula comes directly out of API 653. It can be rearranged to compute O sub R, the length of the next internal interval, and really the simple speed, distance, time formula for constant velocity is all that it is. Notice the yellow highlighting. There are two problems. The first is summing the top side and bottom side corrosion rates. The second is associated directly with computing the bottom side corrosion rate. Let's start with the first problem. Summing the deepest pit from the top side and bottom side is vastly over-conservative. 
the deepest top and bottom pits will simply never align with each other. Pitting is a random process, so it would be like someone who cannot throw a dart hitting a bullseye twice in a row. The second problem is the way that the bottom side corrosion rate is calculated. Rather than using the pit depth, the depth of corrosion is arbitrarily chosen to be the repair to thickness. This is the thickness after repairs, and for a one quarter inch bottom, this usually ranges from 175 to 200 mils. But it is arbitrary and up to the owner to decide what the repair to thickness actually is. The point is that it has nothing to do with the corrosion that has occurred, and in spite of it being called a corrosion rate, it definitely is not a corrosion rate. In effect, the bottom side pit depth, D sub BC, and hence the bottom side corrosion rate, is scaled down from 0 to 1 times the bottom corrosion rate indicated by the scaling factor F. We show how that is derived in the paper. Let's turn to the LCR, or the Linear Corrosion Rate model, so that we can compare it to the CRA, or Corrosion Rate Algorithm, of API 653. The rate of corrosion that should be used is the maximum of either the top side or bottom side corrosion, or D over T. The asterisk is used throughout to indicate calculations per LCR. Next, the operating interval under LCR is shown. Finally, the time to failure is shown by RT divided by R star by setting the MRT in the previous equation to zero. The CRA method for determining the interval is shown here and these equations are in API 653. The definitions show that the STPR is equivalent to the LCR corrosion rate on the top side, so no issue here. But the UPR is based on repair to thickness, not thinning. In fact, it has nothing to do with corrosion. If we plot corrosion rate versus depth as on the left side, we see that LCR depth increases linearly with time as expected. However, the corrosion depth for ACR stops at a level determined by the repair to thickness shown by the blue line. The effect on the computed interval is shown on the right side. Here the interval should keep decreasing as corrosion depth increases, but the blue line shows that the CRA just truncates the interval. Here are three examples. In all cases, we used a plate thickness PT of 250 mils. The repair to thickness RT was assigned 200 mils, and the minimum remaining thickness MRT assigned 100 mils. We also assume inspection intervals to be 20 years, which is current standard practice for the most part. For an RT equal to 200, the corrosion rate would have to exceed 10 MPY to penetrate the bottom. We will talk about the metric F plus R later, but for now just know that it must be less than 0.5 for failure. In example 1, both top side and bottom side LCRs are 3 and 13 MPY respectively. Note that F plus R is less than 0.5 and the failure ratio is greater than 1, so there is failure. In example 2, we have reversed the top and bottom LCRs. In this case, there is no failure which should cause you to wake up, because there should be a failure as nothing has really changed but reversing the top side and bottom side. In example 3, even though F plus R is 0.39 and the failure ratio is greater than 1, no failure is indicated. This is because the 20-year cap in the CRA method calls for an internal inspection and the time to leak exceeds 20 years. Now it's time to roll up our sleeves and reverse engineer what is going on.
What we are doing here is computing the ratio of ACR to LCR intervals. If this ratio is greater than 1, then there is failure because the ACR interval is greater than the LCR interval and corrosion will penetrate the bottom before it is inspected. You can see that there are two factors. The left factor will be 1 half, in our case, because MRT divided by RT is 100 over 200. The right factor is the true maximum LCR rate, divided by the sum of the ACR corrosion rates. This is explained in detail in the white paper that is available from our website or by emailing me. It turns out that there are two cases. In case one, which I call the good, the top side LCR is greater than the bottom side LCR. After doing the math, the ratio of OR to TL or the failure ratio is seen to be bounded between one-fourth and one-half. This means that failure is not possible under CRA. In fact, the conservatism of CRA over LCR is a factor of two to four, which grossly overstates the longevity of the tank bottom corrosion life. Now here comes the bad. This is case two where the bottom side LCR is greater than the top side LCR. This gets a little bit abstract and I will spare you the math, but I recommend you get the white paper and verify this for yourself. The bottom line is that when the corrosion rate exceeds 10 MPY and the corrosion rate ratio, which is the ratio of the top side to bottom side LCR, is less than one half, or the factor F is less than one half, a failure occurs. More details about this later. Here is the ugly. The failure region is plotted as a function of F and R. The factor F is the effective scale down factor for the bottom side LCR that occurs using the ACR. It has a range of 0 to 1, but it's actually a little smaller than this as we will see later. The precise failure criteria are that when R plus F is less than 1 half, the CRA method fails and the tank bottom leaks. The previous plot is somewhat abstract, but this plot is in terms of top side and bottom side LCRs. The blue region is where the tank bottom leaks. The equation for the bounding line is shown above. The minimum corrosion rate, as mentioned before, is shown at 10 MPY on the bottom LCR. We have simulated several hundred thousand cases randomly choosing top side and bottom side corrosion rates from 0 to 20 MPY and looked at the failure ratio. Observe the boundary below which failure occurs. The failure boundary is exactly the same as derived previously. The region above the red line is safe, but the region below is where failure occurs. The contours show how much conservatism or liberalism there is. For example, the darkest purple color at the bottom lower right corner shows minus 10 to minus 8. That means that the ACR will call for an internal inspection 8 to 10 years after the tank has been leaking under the LCR model. As previously mentioned, the language of API 653 is ambiguous and leads to interpretational problems. We have illustrated one way of interpreting it, which is to use LCR on the top and CRA on the bottom. But what happens when you use CRA on both sides, which is what most inspectors are using? Things get even worse. The simulation shows that failure occurs whenever the corrosion rate penetrates the remaining thickness after repairs. This simulation shows failure for the conditions previously described, one of them being the remaining thickness of 200 mils. Note how the unsafe region has increased well beyond the interpretation where CRA only applies to the top side. CRA applied to both sides is worse than the case we have illustrated. We don't go into the details because the complexity of figuring out what CRA does and comparing it to LCR is a big job and becomes very difficult to explain. This just supports the case that CRA must be corrected so that the LCR model is used. I don't ask anyone to blindly accept what I have presented. 
but I do believe that blindly believing in or supporting the CRA is poor engineering and bad standards development practice. API needs to address, address this problem by taking it into committee, which I have already requested. The analysis shown in this presentation can be used by tank owners to prioritize their internal inspections. Those that have conditions where they are in the failure region should consider reinspecting those tanks with priority of others not in those failure regions. High bottom side corrosion rates, which is typical in refineries or in tanks with warmer than ambient temperatures, is one place to look. This is the place where one might consider using LCR to prioritize tank inspections that were done in the past, undoubtedly with CRA. I would also like to say that no serious analysis of corrosion of tank bottoms, useful for risk-based inspection, similar service, or any other corrosion rate problem can be done without corrosion data from a tank population. Unfortunately, there are no formal studies supported by the industry or by API. Until that happens, risk-based analysis and similar service analyses simply cannot be done with reasonable confidence levels. I therefore recommend that these types of formal corrosion rate studies be developed and funded by organizations like API or by joint industry projects. Finally, I recommend that you get the white paper if your job involves tank inspection or you are a tank engineer and read and digest what has been presented so that you can make your own legitimate position on this topic. Thank you. Here is the link to the white paper.